Hello, I'm Dr. Chloe Bennett. Today, we are going to have a frank and mature conversation about a topic that is central to intimacy in a long-term relationship, yet is often misunderstood. It's about female pleasure and, more specifically, how to give it generously and effectively. Let's start with the title of this video. I know it's sensational. The one secret for a waterfall response. That kind of language can sound like a cheap promise from a men's magazine. But I chose to use that title as a starting point because it speaks to a desire that is both common and good. The desire to be a skilled, attentive, and deeply satisfying lover to your partner. The secret I'm going to share today isn't a magic trick. It's not a secret button. It's something far more profound. It's a shift in understanding. It's a piece of knowledge about female anatomy and psychology that, in my 25 years of practice, I can confirm very few men are ever taught. And when you understand this one fundamental truth, you move beyond simple mechanics and into the realm of true connection. You stop being a performer, trying to achieve a goal, and start being a partner, participating in a shared experience of profound pleasure. The waterfall isn't just a physical reaction. It's a metaphor for an uninhibited, total body response of trust and ecstasy. And it is absolutely achievable in your 60s, 70s, and beyond. Part 1. The Common Mistake the bullseye approach. Before we get to the solution, we have to understand the problem. I've spoken with countless couples. A common frustration I hear from women is that their male partners, with the best of intentions, approach oral sex, like they're trying to hit a bullseye in a game of darts. They've learned one thing, the clitoris is the key. So, from the very beginning, they focus all their attention, often with intense, direct, and monotonous stimulation, right on that one tiny spot. Let me ask you, have you ever tried to start a fire by holding a magnifying glass perfectly still on a single speck of kindling? You might get a little smoke, but more often than not, you'll just burn a hole and the fire will go out. You need to warm the entire area first. The bullseye approach often creates the opposite of the desired effect. For her, it can feel less like pleasure and more like an interrogation. It can be overwhelming, sometimes even irritating or painful. It creates a sense of pressure, is it happening yet? Am I responding correctly? And pressure is the absolute enemy of arousal. This is especially true as women age. Post-menopause, hormonal changes can sometimes alter sensitivity. What was once pleasurable might now be too intense. The direct bullseye approach that may have worked in your 20s is often the very thing that's preventing a full-body response now. Have you ever felt like you were doing everything right, but not getting the response you hoped for? It's likely because you were aiming for a target instead of exploring a landscape. Part two, the one secret revealed, the volcano principle. So here's the fundamental truth, the one thing that changes everything, and I'll call it the volcano principle. Most men believe the clitoris is that small, visible nub at the top of the vulva. This is the single biggest misunderstanding in all of sexual anatomy. That visible part, the glans clitoris, is merely the tip of the volcano. The truth is, the clitoris is a magnificent, complex organ, most of which is internal. It's a wishbone-shaped structure with legs, or crura, that extend down and wrap around the vagina. It's composed of the same erectile tissue as a penis. The entire structure is about three to four inches long. The visible part is just a tiny fraction of a much larger network of pleasure. So, when you focus only on that bullseye, you are completely ignoring the vast, Sensitive and powerful base of the volcano, the secret to creating an eruption of pleasure is not to drill down on the peak. It is to warm the entire mountain. The one thing to know is this. You are not stimulating a button. You are awakening an entire system. This system includes the clitoral glands, the hood, the labia, the perineum, and even the inner thighs. All of these areas are rich with nerve endings that are all interconnected. Stimulating the surrounding areas first builds blood flow increases sensitivity in a gentle way, and sends waves of pleasure throughout the entire network, all leading toward the center. Part three, putting the volcano principle into practice. So how do we translate this knowledge into action? It's about changing your mindset from targeting to exploring. One, map the landscape first. Don't go directly for the bullseye. Start with the surrounding areas. Use the flat of your tongue, your lips, and even warm breath on the inner thighs the labia majora, outer lips, and the area around the clitoral hood. Think of this as the overture to a symphony. You are setting the stage. 
building anticipation, and sending a clear message. I am here for all of you, not just one part. Two, listen with your mouth and hands. A woman's body provides constant feedback. Pay attention. Is her breathing changing? Is she making small sounds? Are her hips tilting toward you? These are your cues. If she tenses up or pulls away slightly, you might be too direct or too intense. Ease off, go back to the surrounding areas, and let her body guide you back. Your goal is to follow her pleasure, not to lead it. Three, variety is the language of arousal. The body gets desensitized to monotonous stimulation. Vary your technique. Pressure, alternate between light, feather-like strokes, and firmer pressure. Speed, go from slow and lingering to faster, and more energetic, then back again. Tools, use the tip of your tongue for precision, the flat of your tongue for broad strokes, and your lips for gentle suction. This variety keeps the nervous system guessing and engaged. Four, the power of the pause. One of the most underutilized and powerful techniques is to occasionally pull back. Just when the intensity is building, pause for a moment. This allows the sensations to spread through her body and builds incredible anticipation. It gives her a moment to feel rather than just being stimulated. It turns the experience from a sprint into a dance. What's one thing from this section that feels like a new idea to you? The idea of pausing or starting with the surrounding area? I'd be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments. Part four, the final ingredient, psychological safety. You can have perfect technique, but if your partner doesn't feel safe, relaxed and emotionally connected, her body will not fully open up to you. This is the final crucial piece, especially in a long-term relationship. One, remove the goal. The single most important thing you can do is to genuinely let go of the goal of giving her an orgasm. Communicate this. You can say something like, honey, there is no goal here. I just want to enjoy the act of pleasuring you. Your pleasure is the point, wherever that leads. This instantly removes the pressure from both of you. It allows her to simply feel and receive without worrying if she is performing correctly for you. Two, start a conversation outside the bedroom. This can be a difficult conversation to start, but it's a gift to your relationship. You don't have to be clinical. You could say something like, I was reading something interesting about intimacy and how couples can connect more deeply. I would love for us to explore that together. I want to learn more about what feels good to you now. This frames it as a collaborative journey, not a critique of past experiences. It's an invitation to rediscover each other. Conclusion, from technician to artist, the one thing almost no man knows isn't a secret button. It's a philosophy. It is the shift from seeing the clitoris as a target to understanding the vulva as a vast, interconnected landscape of pleasure, a volcano waiting to be awakened. It's about trading the mindset of a technician focused on a mechanical goal for that of an artist focused on the experience of creation and connection. It requires one, anatomical knowledge, knowing you're dealing with a whole system, not just a button. Two, patience and presence, taking your time and paying attention. Three, communication, listening to her body and creating emotional safety. When you bring these elements together, you create the conditions for that waterfall response. It becomes an expression of her complete trust and surrender to the moment you have co-created. It is one of the most profound gifts of intimacy you can share and it is absolutely within your reach, no matter your age. Thank you for having the courage to explore this topic with me today. It's a sign of your commitment to your partner and your relationship. If you found this conversation valuable, please give it a like to help it reach others, and subscribe for more mature, science-based conversations about living a full and vital life. I'm Dr. Chloe Bennett. Be well to each other.